Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we're addressing some rumors about wide receiver for the Detroit Lions, Kenny Galladay, and whether or not he's going to hit free agency. You know, we've talked about this in recent days. Teams don't let wide receiver ones hit free agency. They have to try and extract some sort of value from them. You know, it's a little bit foolish to let a guy who is capable of putting up over a thousand yards, double digit touchdowns, let him at free agency. Why would you do that? You might as well tag and trade him, get some draft capital back. Um, for free, essentially. So I think that's kind of the decision that Detroit is trying to make right now. But Adam Schefter just reported this morning that they're considering letting him walk in free agency, free of charge. And the Giants over here should pounce on him. They should at least try and make a solid bid to acquire his services. Anthony and I are going to break down what we think Kenny Galladay can offer this offense if they should take a gander on him, take a flyer. Um, not really a flyer, but really established uh, wide receiver who can really upgrade this offensive unit and offer a playmaker for Daniel Jones. That's kind of the conversation we want to have. Before we dive into Kenny Galladay and what he offers, Anthony, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing real good. In the fifth day of my COVID close contact isolation, I'm halfway there, almost out of it. Let's go. Breaking down a lot of film and having fun trying to gather as much information on this draft and free agency class to grit. make elite contact or content for all of you fans that are listening. Um, in terms of Kenny Galladay, you know I've been discussing Kenny Galladay extensively for months now as my number one target for the Giants and free agency. Unfortunately, I didn't actually think it was a realistic possibility for him to hit the open market. I didn't think that he would really be available for the Giants. Now, according to Adam Schefter, it seems like a possibility. Maybe he will be on the open market and the Giants will have a chance to offer him a contract. We know that the Giants were interested in Kenny Galladay during the season. They looked into... Um, trading for him before the trade deadline, but it didn't go through, you know, uh, they couldn't come to an agreement, whatever. At least they called, they inquired, they wanted to know what the price tag was for Kenny Galladay. Um, and especially that's important now because as Detroit thinks about whether or not they're going to put the franchise tag, they did have a price tag for the Giants that the Giants weren't willing to meet back in October. So now if they franchise tag him, will the Giants be willing to meet that price tag now and give up draft capital to trade for Kenny Galladay? Probably unlikely if they weren't willing to do it in October. I doubt they're going to be willing to do it now. But if he does hit the open market, I think the Giants are going to be completely interested. And I think they'll be at the forefront of trying to sign him. Um, and I think they very well should be because he is an established veteran wide receiver who has proven that he can go for a 1,000 receiving yards in a season, any given season, and put up touchdowns and be in true primary number one wide receiver threat. So I'm a huge fan of Kenny Galladay. I think that his fit with the New York Giants is, you know, as good as it gets in terms of these free agents. So I really hope he hits the open market. And now that we have a glimmer of hope, maybe he will. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the idea is do we really want to pursue Kenny Galladay and, you know, what does he offer this team? But before we dive into that, just a second, little side uh, spin here. The Giants just restructured tight end Levine Toilolo, and I want to talk about that for about a minute just to get our reasoning behind it and what we think. Levine Toilolo was projected to earn $2.95 million for the 2021 season. Now he's restructuring. Ah, uh, man. I mean, unless this is a bare minimum deal, this is perplexing to me. This is baffling. You know, he is a guy who played 27% of snaps last year. He caught five passes for 50 yards. And yes, he was a blocking tight end. He was TE3. He was behind Evan Ingram and Caden Smith. Why do you need to pay a guy that much? Why can't you have, um, if you're running three tight end sets, if you're you know running those sets in the running game, why don't you just use a jumbo package with a, with a guard or a, a, a reserve offensive lineman? There's no reason to, to save an extra roster spot for a guy that you don't need who's not producing, who's really not doing anything at all, um, unless they just like his presence in the locker room. I mean, there might be more to this story, but... For the most part, I don't really get it. They need the savings now. They need to roll this cash over into multiple uh, different players. But, you know, the Giants are, are really looking like they're not going to have much cap space to, to run with this offseason. They might want to wait until next year. Um, but we're going to see how things progress. Restructuring his contract, unless it's a bare minimum deal, makes little sense to me. I imagine they're probably like, Levine, man, you didn't do much last year. You're not going to have much of a market. You're better off just taking a veteran minimum, um, which is fine if he does do that because, you know, the top 51 cut off. If a guy gets pushed up to that, this, the cap saving is so marginal. Um, it's worth it to just re-sign Torlolo and just keep him around if he's going to be that cheap. Um, but at the same time, you know, you don't need a tight end three. You know, you can use jumbo sets. You can use offensive linemen in that facet. You use those guys as multiple players. You don't need to pay someone as a TE3 when you have Caden Smith, who actually I like and a lot of people like. He just was underutilized. Uh, but Anthony, what do you think about Levine Toilolo being restructured? Do you think that the Giants should have just moved on from him and just, you know, just went with a different player, maybe just a different position altogether? 
Yes, I think that they should have cut Levine Toy Lolo. I'm a little confused why they would restructure and extend him. I really don't think that he added much to the Giants. I didn't think he was that great as a blocking tight end. Um, uh, if I go look at his PFF stats, I know that he didn't grade that highly as a run blocker. He was above average. He was good. You know, that's what he's paid to do. But he's paid a lot to do that. You know, the fact that he was being paid seven figures in the first place is surprising. You know, for a tight end three, typically typically those guys are getting the minimum and they're um, six-figure players. So it's very surprising that Levine Toy Lolo is valued as highly as he is by this Giants coaching staff and roster. Or maybe it's not that surprising considering, you know, we've seen them value guys like Patrick Omame and others in the past. So, um, you know, it's an interesting contract. It's kind of a weird one. Uh, I think that the Giants could have easily replaced Levine Toy Lolo with somebody cheaper. Um, you know, I think really the main selling point to me was if you cut him, there was zero dead cap space. So you save you know, over two and a half million dollars in cap space, which the Giants clearly need right now. They're in quite a cap pinch. And then I think that the easiest way of replacing him um, was just about any single way of replacing him. You could go with Matt Parrott as your in-line tight end in those three tight end situations. You know, just go with the jumbo offensive lineman, the jumbo package. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way, you can literally draft a tight end in the seventh round who's probably going to be more productive and probably going to have more room to grow as a blocker, all of that. And then, you know, there's plenty of veterans. Yeah, and if they really wanted to bring Toy Lolo back, I guess, you know, let's wait till we see the terms of this new contract restructure. But really, it sounds like, you know, if he's going to be paid over a million dollars a season, I'm probably going to look at it strangely because I do think this is a guy who should be on a minimum contract, you know, only getting six figures. And I don't think that this is a player that the Giants really can afford to be playing, paying over a million dollars um, right now, given their current salary cap situation. So, you know, I think they should have caught him. They didn't. Whatever. I'll move on. Um, if they did cut him, I think that they should have just re-signed him back if they really wanted to keep him, but keep him under a million dollars. I guess we'll see what this new contract looks like, but I don't know. It's a little bit of a confusing move. I'm not very high on Levine Toy Lolo. He really doesn't offer anything in the passing game, and I understand that he's a blocking tight end, but I'd rather get a guy who can do both or just put an offensive lineman there if that's his only purpose is to run block. Yeah, I mean, 27% of snaps last year, what really is his value? I, I, I don't know. He didn't catch any passes. He basically was useless um, You know, while on the field. The Giants' running game was, was average. You know, are you really paying $3 million for an average running game with a TE3 who plays 27% of snaps? The only thing I can think of is he was a good special teamer. You know, he played 38% of his special team snaps, but even that's not even half. So really, what is his value? I don't know. They probably just went up to him and said, either you take the veteran minimum or you're on the streets and you're probably not even going to get a, get anything on the streets, you know? So let him compete. He has zero dead cap still. So with that being said, they could always cut him later. Um... And, and then, you know, replace him with another player. Maybe they just want to keep him around just to compete and see if there's anything left they can extract from him, um, which might be a decent move. But for right now, they could have used the money. Uh, but you know, we'll see what happens. Of course, this is an ongoing situation. The Giants are going to make a ton of different uh, moves and changes in the coming days. But back to Kenny Galladay, you know, he's a player who is an established uh, wide receiver. Um, last year, he only played in five games, had a hip injury, missed a majority of the season at 338 yards and two touchdowns in those five games. Um, but, you know, he is capable of being that featured guy on the outside. 2019, 26 years old, um, two years ago. He played in all 16 games, had his best season to date, almost 1,200 yards and 11 touchdowns, double-digit touchdowns. That's what really piques my interest. Double-digit touchdowns, 18.3 yards per reception. He can push the field. He can win 50-50 balls. He can dominate in man coverage. Um, he can separate. He's really long and lanky, can make athletic catches. Um, he can do it all. He's a very, very talented receiver, and I think the Giants would be foolish not to at least submit a bid um, on him. Now, the question is, how much will he cost? Uh, because he could be a pricey receiver. He will be if he hits the market, because he might be the top guy, especially if A-Rob is going to be franchise tagged by the Bears, which I fully anticipate. Um, but if Kenny Gallagher is on the market, Anthony, what do you see him costing? Do you think that he would be around... 15, 16 million per season. Do you think he goes on a one year deal and tries to catapult that into a multi year deal? Or do you think he's going to, you know, ask for multi years right off the bat and be like, you know, I want to be here long term. I'm demanding big money, you know, A Rob type of money because now I'm the wide receiver one on the market. 
him being the wide receiver number one on the market definitely means he's going to get paid like the number one wide receiver on the market, right? So, you know, I think that he could, you know, realistically, $18 million a year, you know, he could probably ask for that and get it from some team. I don't know if the Giants can afford to give him that, but some team can afford to and some team likely will do it. You know, the franchise tag is around $16 million, so maybe his on average annual salary will be around there, but I assume it might get a little higher depending on... Um, and I think that he's going to get a long-term extension. I think Kenny Galladay is a player. You know, there's been some talk about players considering taking one-year deals because of the COVID salary cap situation. Um, but I think that realistically, when you are the number one guy at a position in the open market, you're going to want that big long-term extension to lock you in and reset the market, right? So I think that's what he's looking to do, probably to reset the market with a long-term extension, where he does make around $18 million a year. It will be a hefty price tag, um, one that personally I would be willing to pay. I think that Kenny Galladay has proven himself and proven that he is a number one wide receiver in the NFL that can change your offense and really help your quarterback develop and grow and really help your offense open things up and start airing the ball out at a more efficient rate. So Definitely think Kenny Galladay is worth the price tag. Just don't know if the Giants can afford it. They're going to have to make a lot of cuts, maybe trade some players. It's going to be difficult. And if they are to sign Kenny Galladay to a long-term extension, what they're going to have to do is keep the salary cap hit low for 2021 and then start backloading that deal when they know that they're going to have more salary cap space due to COVID you know, no longer being a thing, hopefully in a few years from now, right? Hopefully the salary cap will continue to rise the way that it was prior to COVID-19. So that's really what I think that his contract will look like. I think, you know, on average annually, my projection, let's say $17, $18 million. Let's say this year, if the Giants were to sign him, they probably want to keep that cap hit around $12 million. But that does mean that one of those years down the line, his salary cap hit is going to be over $20 million. But hopefully the salary cap has inflated enough to the point where that's affordable for the Giants. Yep. I mean, the, the reality is the Giants are going to have to restructure some contracts to fit a contract like that just to begin with. You know, we're seeing reports pop up every day. They want to retain uh, Dalvin Thomas and they want to retain Letter Williams. Where are they finding this money? Next season is where they have the most money. You know, next season is where the Giants can really look and say, um, okay, we can spend now um, and really backload some of those contracts and really get Daniel Jones the weapons he needs. But the question right now for Frost Anthony is, is Daniel Jones one year away from the Giants saying we need to move on? Is it now or never for him? Because if they don't address that position now, if they don't give him some weapons, what do you do? You know, how do you uh, how do you go about that? Do you, do you think that Daniel Jones really only has one year to prove his worth, or do you think they're going to give him another two, maybe even three, the whole entirety of his rookie deal? I think that once they pair Daniel Jones with a number one wide receiver, they'll be able to see what they truly have in Daniel Jones, right? Because it seems like ownership and management have wanted to make the excuse for Daniel Jones that he hasn't had enough to work with. You know, they came out postseason press conferences. They promised that they're going to get Daniel Jones more playmakers. They said they're going to add more offensive weapons, right? So I think that's their plan. They want to go out there and get some guys so Daniel Jones can be in a comfortable situation where he can prove himself. I think you're looking at a situation where you need a year three breakout from this guy. And if you don't get it, Here's the thing. I think that if Daniel Jones doesn't break out in year three after the Giants go out there and get him his number one receiver and maybe an improved offensive line, if he just stays stagnant and he doesn't break out, I, and I'll say this, I thought he was much better in 2020 than he was in his rookie 2019 season. I saw him improve a, in a lot of areas, but that year three breakout has to happen. And if it doesn't, I think that we're talking about the Giants not winning enough games to make the playoffs, and I think at that point we're talking about firing Dave Gettleman, and then at that point I think we're talking about bringing a new general manager in who will probably want to restart at quarterback and get a new guy to bring in. Um, so I think that Daniel Jones's future predicates on a lot of things, not just his own performance, but also the team's performance and Dave Gettleman's performance this offseason, whether he's able to bring in enough solid pieces so we can get a full evaluation of Daniel Jones uh, in 2021. So. I personally believe in Daniel Jones. I think that he's going to establish himself as a franchise quarterback this year. I think he's going to get his wide receiver one, be it through the draft or free agency. I think that he will find that playmaker that he needs, or Gettleman will hopefully find it for him. And then if he does, I think Daniel Jones will have what he needs to work with, and he'll break out, and he'll be our franchise quarterback. But... Yeah, I think that Galladay would be huge for that, and he would help him a lot. But if the Giants aren't able to get that guy, I do think we get into shaky uh, shaky waters, thin ice, and we could be looking at a potential scenario where the Giants move on from Daniel Jones after his third season. Man, if the Giants move on from Daniel Jones, I can't see a world where Dave Gettleman doesn't go with him. You know what I mean? Like, how, how do you possibly justify keeping Dave Gettleman 
if he drafted Daniel Jones, did nothing to help him, and then eventually they have no choice but to move on. You know, this is this is becoming a problem, and I don't want to be a Dave Gettleman hater. You know, I want to love Dave Gettleman. I really want to love every single person the Giants have. I want them to be the best that they can possibly be. I want them to nail free agency. I want them to kill the NFL draft. But I just can't sit here and, and say that they do. You know, I really, I'm really getting tired of having to explain or, or contemplate why they do things. Um, there's a lot of uh, volatility when it comes to Dave Gettleman's decisions. You know, last free agency, absolutely killed it. Hiring Joe Judge, absolutely killed it. But then there's like the Jonathan Stewart signings and, you know, um, the hindsight of, of drafting Saquon Barkley. You know, of course, I love Saquon as much as the next guy, but he's been injured the past couple of seasons, and that's historically the case with running backs. Um, and now they're going to have to pay him really big money if they if they decide to keep him. So, like, what are the Giants doing? Like, wh- where are they going? I think Joe Judge is doing the right thing. I think if there's anything that Dave Gettleman will part one day leaving us, it is Joe Judge. And I think that'll be his greatest legacy with us uh, right now specifically. But, you know, I'm dying. I'm dying to see some progress. I think we saw some last season. I think Daniel Jones uh, developed in a lot of ways in terms of um, just awareness in the pocket and many other different factors. Um, but I think this is the offseason that Dave Gettleman really needs to prove to us and show us that he's got it under control. He knows what this team needs. The defense take, took a massive step forward. You know, kudos to him. Really, really great job there with the signings of James Bradbury, Blake Martinez, Graham Gano, the kicker. Um, you know, even even uh, trading for Leonard Williams in hindsight looks good now. Uh, based on the coaching, he needs to get a really good coach in Patrick Graham to get it done, which was a, a Joe Judge guy. You know, it's all correlated. Patrick Graham was a Joe Judge guy. But Joe Judge was a Dave Gettleman hire, you know? So it's like, okay, it all trickles down to some to some effect, um, and it's all connected in some way. So really big kudos to Dave Gettleman for this last draft. We need to replicate that now. Um, so I'm giving him the, fe- the benefit of the doubt. This upcoming offseason is really important to me, uh, personally as a fan and someone who follows this team and covers this team every single day. This, up- this upcoming offseason needs to show that we can take a big step forward towards possibly making a playoff run you know that or at least making the playoffs making the wild card anything just getting into elimination rounds this is the next step we need to take um and it, that means kenny galladay has to be in consideration um as a free agent or C- curtis samuel or Corey davis one of those three guys has to be in the conversation um the giants need to make it happen whether it's one of those three guys the cheapest one i don't care they need help for daniel jones and the offensive line is another problem of course we have the kevin zeiler situation that's going to unfold very very soon they've already reported that they're going to be considering restructuring him or trying to trade him who knows how they supplement his loss through the draft maybe who knows um the giants have a lot of work to do dave gettleman's got a lot of work to do joe judge got a lot of work to do um I, right now i don't entirely trust what's happening but that's just because i i've been um you know and all of us really have just been cautioned with bad moves and, and cap situations nate solder's contract nobody saw covid coming it's really hard to deal with that so i'm gonna give him that uh you know that bit of uh, of slack as well there's so many factors going against gettleman going against joe judge going against management and daniel jones for that matter so it's really hard to maneuver this i think if they had 205 million dollars in cap right now if they had 40 50 million dollars to spend right now we would expect them to really overhaul this, but it's going to be really difficult to to work around that. So I think it's fair to mention all those different things. Um, but if there, if a guy like Kenny Galladay does hit the market, I feel as though we need to be involved in the conversation. We need to be considering that. But Anthony, do you think that if it comes down to letting Dalvin Tomlinson walk or Leonard Williams walk in favor of signing Kenny Galladay because we just don't have the money to do it, are you willing to, to let one of those guys go to pursue a, a free agent wide receiver? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It depends on what they're asking for, what the contracts would be for those guys, and what it would be for the wide receivers. And again, it it depends on who's on the open market. If Kenny Galladay is there, I want to make a run for him. But you know, there's a chance that the giant or that the Lions don't put the franchise tag on him, right? But there's a chance that they do. You know, it's still up in the air. We're, we're talking about this because there's a rumor that they're considering letting him hit the open market, but it's possible that they don't. You know, they always could put the franchise tag on him. There's about 48 hours left until that decision has to be made. So it's possible that he does get the franchise tag. In terms of Dalvin Thomas and Leonard Williams, I think those that's an interesting case, right? Because those guys were really impactful for our defense. They're very consistent. They're never injured. Um, Kenny Galladay does have some injury issues, so if you want to bring that up, you can. Um, but with Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson versus Kenny Galladay, let's make it that. 
do you want a better offense or do you want to retain the defense? That's just what it comes down to, personal preference, right? Um, if there was a way to keep all of them under, you would want to do that. But it seems like it's going to be really difficult to do that unless the Giants start cutting numerous players. And I'm talking about key players. And we're talking about maybe even cutting players that are starting quality players like Evan Engram and Jabril Peppers. That's the only way that you get to keep all three of those guys under contract. And um, those three guys being Leonard Williams, Dalvin Tomlinson, and the addition of Kenny Galladay, right? So it would be very difficult to keep all three of those players. So if I had to trade one of those defensive linemen for Kenny Galladay, I don't know if trading or, you know, letting Dalvin Tomlinson walk actually does get you Kenny Galladay. I don't even know if that's going to be enough. You might realistically have to say goodbye to Leonard Williams in order to bring back or to bring in Kenny Galladay, which is really unfortunate that the Giants are in the salary cap situation. You know, COVID has a huge impact on that. But of course, the Giants leading uh, the league in dead cap over the past three, four years does not help that either. Right. So Giants have a lot of cuts to make. Um, I, I don't really have a definitive answer on if I want to give up any of those players to sign Kenny Galladay. I guess it really just depends on what their asking prices are in the market once we get to free agency next week. That's when I would really be, be comfortable making that decision. Yep, and with the coming days, they're going to be super f action-packed, guys. I'm actually super excited for the next uh, two weeks or so, a week and a half. There's going to be so much action in the NFL. We'll be all over it, of course, making videos daily, um, recapping everything that's going on from the cuts to the decisions to the free agent signings to the, um, you know, the, the franchise tag. That's coming up, I think, tomorrow, um, right? The franchise tag deadline. I think that's tomorrow. Do you, do you it's know within it the next 48 hours of now. But also with the franchise tag March deadline, that's, that has an yep. interesting... Um, uh, stipulation to it, right? Because right now the salary caps has not been set. So the NFLPA and the NFL are actually in negotiations. That salary cap deadline could get extended by a day or two so that the NFL can set the salary cap requirements. So that's something that was reported early this morning. Um, I don't know by the time this video comes out, maybe they'll already have that set and we'll know when the salary or franchise tag deadline is. But right now it's a soft deadline of the ninth and it could actually be extended a day or two. Yep, so, you know, we're going to see what happens there. The Giants could still use the franchise tag on Leonard Williams, even Dalvin Tomlinson. We'll see what happens there. Um, but, you know, they could always use a tag and trade type of situation. Some people have even considered the fact that, um, you know, tagging Leonard Williams and trading him for, for draft capital, I've seen that bubble to the surface. That's an interesting one. Let us know what you think about that in the comments. Um, but Kenny Galladay, guys, just to wrap up this video quickly, I think the Giants have to be involved. We already know they were interested in him as a trade uh, prospect back in August, it was August or September, um, probably later than that, actually. They were interested in him as a potential trade uh, with the Lions. It, it fell apart, though. You know, it, it happens. The injuries took its toll, and, you know, the Giants couldn't find a good, a good trade package for him. But, you know, now that he has free agency, this is kind of like the alternative of the Leonard Williams, right? Instead of trading for Leonard Williams, the Giants could have just signed him in free agency. Um, now, instead of just you know, uh, trading for um, Kenny Galladay, they could just sign him in free agency. So we're going to see the opposite side of that. Um, potentially if he does hit but you know it's gonna be exciting i'm pretty i'm pretty hyped to see who they target here how much a guy like kenny Gale is gonna demand on the open market coming off a down year um but they know he's established they know what he can do so i'm pretty hyped about this anthony you have any last words on galladay before we sign off here I'm a huge Kenny Galladay fan. He is a true number one wide receiver in my eyes. I think that he's a perfect scheme fit for the New York Giants and the offense that Jason Garrett wants to run, right? Jason Garrett really loves those guys who can go up there and make those contested catches. Kenny Galladay um, was one of the league leaders in contested catch rate. He's phenomenal. He's big body. You know, he's what all Giants fans really want to see. He might not be my ideal, you know, prototypical wide receiver who separates with his routes, but he does create separation. He goes and makes those 50-50 balls, and he is an electric player that can go game in and game out and really ball out for you and really help and change your offense. So huge Kenny Galladay fan. I hope and pray that he hits the open market. And if he does, my heart will be absolutely crushed if he signs anywhere other than the New York Giants. I really want to see the Giants go and pursue him. And I think that they will considering they had interest in him in October near the trade deadline. So hopefully he hits free agency. Hopefully the Giants can get it done. That's the number one thing I want to see happen this offseason. Absolutely, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Talking about Kenny Galladay, a couple interesting things, Levine Toilolo's contract, uh, Dave Gettleman and whatnot. But of course, we'll have you covered for the rest of the coming off season and so much more to go. I'm really hyped about it. Wednesday, we got um, a, a film prospect on from the draft, which would be super dope. And, you know, we have some other people coming on as well. 
Uh, I'm really hyped about that. So as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications on YouTube below. Make sure to turn on notifications for Apple and Spotify as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you guys on the next one.